Hey, your friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I'm very excited to show you a device that I've had in my possession for several months. I've been putting it through the paces and this is long overdue. And the device I want to show off to you today and review, let me just pull out the box here. It's this guy right here. The Symphony Desktop Series from Apogee. I got to tell you, I am blown away by this thing. And if you decide this video is too long, didn't read, here's the summary. The Symphony Desktop Series is incredible. It's amazing, pristine quality, amazing technology, fully tactile and accessible. And if you're in the market for a new audio interface, you need to check this out immediately. There it is. That's the whole video. That's all you need to know. Now, why do I love the Symphony desktop so much? I can give you four reasons. Number one, the preamps and the outputs on this thing sound pristine. It's amazing how much of a step up it is in comparison to Apogee's own interfaces like the Element and the Ensemble, which I A-B'd and I compared. But these particular pre's, the outputs, this kind of quality was only available with Apogee's Symphony line, which was there, you know, it was at a price point for pro studios. Many of us maybe couldn't afford or maybe wouldn't want to afford for that particular price point. So now they're available to us in a form factor and a price point that is just much more accessible. And it's really that good. It's awesome. Number two is the preamp technology that comes unique to the Symphony desktop. And that is the alloy mic preamps. And this technology models different preamps. And it's not just a digital recreation. The hardware itself changes the impedance load. It's a physical change as well. And at this moment, the Symphony desktop ships with two different preamps that it can model. Besides just the Symphony desktop preamp that is clean, pristine, you also have an emulation of a Neve 1066 preamp and also an Ampex 601 tube preamp. That sounds pretty crispy. I like to use it for a little more grit, a little more assertiveness. Number three is the onboard DSP, which is not new to the Symphony desktop. We've had it with the Element series, the Ensemble, where you can load Apogee's own plugins to monitor through or even use natively in Logic Pro or any DAW. But what's different about the Symphony desktop is that you can now not only monitor, but print the effects as well, which is pretty awesome if you want more of an analog, you know, commit to tape type of workflow. And number four, which I'll show later in the video, is the amazing Apogee Channel Effects plugin, which basically allows you to affect and use every aspect of the inputs on your interface from Logic Pro, from a DAW. You're able to switch the preamps, load effects for monitoring and printing, you know, turn phantom power on and off, adjust the monitor mix. It's just like amazing. I love it. Cool. Before we dig into this review, I do want full disclosure. Apogee sent the Symphony desktop series for me to check out. All the good feelings that I'm feeling, all the gushing is my own. And I'm not giving it back to them. I love this thing too hard. That's the full story. Let's dig into the review. First things first, what's in the box? Well, number one, we have the stellar Apple style box and presentation, which, you know, it only gives you the good feelings. I really enjoy opening it up. Obviously, it has the audio interface. It comes with two cables to connect to your Mac or computer, either a USB-C or USB-A. We have a power cable. We have a USB stick, which I'll touch on in just a moment. And you know, technically it ships with two plugins, which is the ECS channel strip and the Clear Mountain Spaces Reverb. Now, what's up with that USB stick that comes with the interface? Well, as it turns out, this is key for updating the firmware on the device. And the way to go about using the USB stick is that you plug it into your Mac to begin with. You download any updates for the Symphony desktop to the stick by downloading from Apogee's website and then dragging that update to the stick itself. And then you eject the USB stick and inject it to the audio interface. Go to system settings on the Symphony desktop, go to the third page of settings and then click on update. And then the device will walk you through updating the firmware. And then once it's complete, you can unplug the USB stick. All right, so what can you expect in terms of inputs and outputs with the Symphony desktop? Well, it's a smaller form factor. It's meant for a desktop. So it's smaller than something rack mountable, but I would say it's very robust. Number one, you get two combi jacks, both XLR inputs and quarter inch inputs. So you can plug in microphone cable. You can plug in an instrument cable, even the outputs from a hardware device into the Symphony desktop. You also get an instrument input. That's a JFET 
input. So it has a little more harmonic content going on, a little more transient action for recording guitars and basses. And that's right on the front of the unit. You also have eight inputs and outputs over ADAT if you want to plug in an external audio interface and combine, you know, inputs from one device to the Symphony desktop series. So you have like 10 or however many inputs you need. In terms of outputs, you have a left and a right main stereo output for studio monitors. And it also has two headphone outputs, which, you know, every interface on the planet should come with a minimum of two headphone outputs, right? You always need a second output just in case you're collaborating with someone. Next, I think we need to discuss the touch screen on the device because is it a novelty or is it a game changer? Is it really worth it to have, you know, like an iPad on the front of your audio interface? And I would say, in my humble opinion, the touch screen on the Symphony desktop series makes the Symphony desktop the most tactile and the most accessible audio interface around. What makes the touch screen so awesome is that you're able to access literally everything about the unit in terms of inputs, outputs, software mixers, ADAP mixers, system settings, not from a mixer on your Mac, but in fact, from the device itself, you just click on the control that you want to impact. And then you use the large knob to the right of the touch screen to adjust the control of that particular input, output, mixer control, whatever it is. And if it's more of like a toggle, like an on off type of switch, you just tap on it with your finger to turn it on or off. So just by clicking on an input or output, you click on the input or output and then adjust its level with the big knob. If you click multiple times on an input or output, it will page through different controls for that input or output. We also have in the upper left-hand corner any system settings. So you just click on system settings and then you can swipe through different pages. You can return to the inputs and outputs by clicking the level or peak level lines in the bottom left-hand corner. And you can also access ADAT mixer levels and software mixer levels from the button in the right-hand corner, which looks like some sliders or faders. And on top of all this, you have a full visual display of the preamps that the unit models for adjusting the different controls and also the print and monitor effects. So in this case, it would be the ECS channel strip at the time of this video. You can adjust the EQ, the compression, the saturation, everything just by clicking on a control and then adjusting the big knob. It really is the best of all worlds. On the preamp side, the preamps are legit. Number one, you have the Symphony preamps, which sound pristine and quality and super clean. Then you have the modeled preamps, which you can drive into the preamp technology. So you can, you know, adjust the level with the output level first. So let's say we're recording a vocal, which we'll demonstrate in just a moment. Set that output level to a healthy level, hit the gain link function, and then start to drive up the drive. And the drive allows you to drive further into the circuit so you can get a little more saturation going, maybe even a little more compression as you saturate the signal, even a little bit of distortion or a lot of bit of distortion, depending on you know, what you're trying to achieve. And in fact, I have some examples here of some vocals I recorded to illustrate and demonstrate the different preamp sounds and how much you can drive into them. I made it a point to set my initial level for each of the preamp models to zero VU. And then I gain linked the output level and the drive and started to drive the drive harder and harder so we can hear how it saturates this particular vocal. Let's take a listen right now to these different examples. You'd say, I'm putting you on it, but it's no joke. It's doing me harm, you know I can't sleep. I can't stop my brain, you know it's three weeks. I'm going insane, you know I'd give you everything I've got for a little peace of mind. You'd say, I'm putting you on it, but it's no joke. It's doing me harm, you know I can't sleep. I can't stop my brain, you know it's three weeks. I'm going insane, you know I'd give you everything I got for a little peace of mind. You'd say, I'm putting you on it, but it's no joke. It's doing me harm, you know I can't sleep. I can't stop my brain, you know it's three weeks. I'm going insane, you know I'd give you everything I've got for a little peace of mind. You'd say, I'm putting you on it, but it's no joke. It's doing me harm, you know I can't sleep. I can't stop my brain, you know it's three weeks. I'm going insane, you know I'd give you everything I've got for a little peace of mind. You'd say, I'm putting you on it, but it's no joke. 
It's doing me harm, you know I can't sleep. I can't stop my brain, you know it's three weeks. I'm going insane, you know I'd give you everything I've got for a little peace of mind. So again, you can access everything on the Symphony desktop from the unit itself. You really don't need a separate mixer app on your Mac or anywhere else. It's so accessible. But if you feel that the touch screen is a little claustrophobic for you, that's fine. Apogee also has the brand new Apogee Control 2 app that is for the Symphony desktop series and other Apogee interfaces. So it's basically the same thing. You have access to all inputs and outputs, all functions in terms of system settings from your Mac. So you can choose the preamps, you can drive them, set the levels right from your Mac instead of the hardware unit. You can set your print and monitor effects. And you can see that as I adjust and pick different preamps, you can see it adapting and changing on the hardware unit itself on the touch screen. And the same goes for the effects as well as I choose print and monitor effects. Now, already I think this is humongous value, but what puts the Symphony desktop over the top for me is the awesome new channel effects plugin from Apogee which if you think about it, basically allows the Symphony desktop to integrate with any DAW that you're working with, whether it's Logic Pro or anything else. Basically, you load the plugin on the channel strip that you plan on recording to. So let's say you're recording vocals to a track. You load the channel effects plugin and you go down to the channel linking option and you set it to whichever input you're recording to. So we'll say input one. At that point, the plugin allows you to adjust the preamp technology for that input from Logic Pro it allows you to turn on phantom power, just, you know, the preamp level, anything else related to the inputs. You can also set your monitor and print effects right from the plugin. And the plugins are running off the DSP on the hardware. You're basically accessing the hardware from Logic Pro. You don't even have to look at the Symphony desktop if you don't want to. And you don't even have to look at a separate mixer app if you don't want to. You're truly working just within Logic Pro or any DAW. And I do want to point out that Apogee's line of plugins are not only DSP driven, they also are native, which you can use in Logic Pro regardless if the hardware is even connected to your computer. All right, so we've covered just about everything about this interface. We've covered the awesome pristine audio quality. We've covered the preamp modeling technology, the tactile accessible touchscreen and workflow, the plugins that allow you to access the onboard DSP, for printing and monitoring effects. You know, all of this is a lot of gushing. Is there anything that maybe, Chris, you don't like so much about the device? The only thing that's missing for me is access to Logic's audio device controls, or rather Logic accessing the audio device controls of the unit in the mixer. That's what made the element and ensemble so special to me. And really it's just that direct button at the top, which allows you zero latency monitoring through Logic software mixer. But it's already on the release schedule from Apogee. I can see it on their website. It's on the release schedule. It's going to happen, just a matter of time. In fact, even that, I'm not really missing that much because you can just set up a software mixer within the device, on the device itself for zero latency monitoring. Maybe the only con for many people will be the price at 1500 bucks. You know, it's pricier than other models, but I gotta say for all the value you get with this particular audio interface, I don't think they're wrong for charging that much money. So in a nutshell, if you're in the market for an audio interface and you're looking for absolute best quality, you know, a form factor that works well on any desk, has onboard DSP that has preamp modeling technology that won't try to lock you in to using their DSP cards forever and ever, or you'll be locked out of your plugins that you own. I can't see a better interface to check out. I'm, I'm really serious here. It has replaced even the Apogee interfaces that I own. I'm only monitoring and recording through the Symphony desktop at this point. I love it. I can't imagine getting another audio interface for any time in the foreseeable future. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.